Hey, I'm Tom from Made by Loop, and in this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to run through a brand new way to create number counters with commas like this in After Effects. And I'll also cover how the same technique can be used to create currency counters too. If you're looking to create more of a sliding number counter animation rather than this version that just counts up directly, then check the link in the description to check out our Numero script that takes care of everything for you. For this tutorial though, we're going to look at creating a much more simple number counter with commas. And you may have seen similar tutorials out there that have a whole list of complicated expressions, but in this example, I'm going to show you how to do it using just two lines of code. Now, before we get started, I should point out that this tutorial requires After Effects CC 2020 or above. It will not work in older versions. Without getting too technical, CC 2020 came with a massive update to the expression language within After Effects. And this means that we can now make use of a lot more of the modern JavaScript functions that make our lives a whole lot easier. Now don't worry if that makes absolutely no sense, just make sure that you're on the latest version of After Effects and everything in this tutorial should work nicely. So let's get into things. First off, I'm going to show you how to create a simple number counter with commas and then I'll look at adding the currency symbols later on in the video. So in a new composition, I'm going to add a new text layer. And I won't add any text to it, but what I will do is come over to the Effects and Presets panel, and I'll add an angle control to our new text layer. Okay, now with this angle control added, I'm going to come into the Source Text option here, and I'll use this Pick Whip tool to click and drag to select the angle control value. So now the source text is linked to this angle control. And if I change the value of the angle control, you can see that we now have a basic number counter. The reason I've used an angle control instead of a slider control, for example, is because the slider has a maximum value of 1 million, whereas the angle control doesn't. So if you're after really big numbers, then the angle control is your friend. The slider is a bit limited. But right now, if I enter a value of 1000, say, you can see that we don't have any commas coming up. To get the commas, we need to come into this source text value here and make a slight change. So if we delete everything that's here, and then what I'm going to do is type an expression. And this expression is var num equals parse int with a capital I, open brackets, and then I'll use this pick whip tool again to get the angle control. And finally, I'll add another close brackets and a semicolon. Then I'll press return to create a new line. And the last bit of the expression is num, which is our variable we've just created, dot to locale string, open brackets and close brackets, and a final semicolon. So what this expression is basically doing is it's saying create a new variable called num, and that variable should be this angle control. But we want to treat this value as a whole number, which is where the pass int function comes in. This basically means pass it as an integer, which is a whole number. If we wanted to include decimal points, then you could change this to pass float instead. The next line of the expression takes our variable, which is our angle control value, and it applies this function to it, a to locale string. And we can see now that if we change the value of this angle control to something like 10,000, you can see that the to locale string function automatically adds in a comma for you. And if you want to animate your counter, all you'd need to do is keyframe this angle control. So we could set a keyframe at the start to say zero and move the marker along and set another value, let's say 100,000. And you can see that we have a nice counter animation and the commas are added automatically. Now, although the counter that I've created here shows commas, yours may show something quite different depending on where you are in the world, and here's why. Basically, what this function does is it says format this number how the locals do. So because I'm in the UK and we use commas here, it's showing me commas. But if you're watching this in Finland, for example, you may see something like this. And I've got this other composition to illustrate it. So you can see that there's no comma, there's more of a space. 
and that's because in Finland the number format uses a space instead of a comma. Luckily however, we can tell this to locale string function to use a different format by including some additional values inside these brackets. And you can see here that to illustrate the Finnish example, I have the language code fi dash capital fi, and this is Finland. If you're elsewhere and would like a comma, you can use the UK locale, which is en dash gb in capitals. And you can see now that we have the comma back. So we've seen how we can create a number counter with commas, but what about if we wanted to show a currency value instead? Let's say £100,000 for example. Well, as well as the locale settings, this to locale string function comes with a host of other options that you can set too. Now, I won't get into them all because there's quite a few, but for this video, I'll just focus on the currency options. So to turn this number into a currency, we have to add another argument inside the brackets here, where we've just specified the language. And for currency, we'll add the following. So after the language, which we've set up here, we'll add a comma, then open a curly bracket. So I'll type style, colon, and then a quotation mark, currency, and another quotation mark, comma, currency, colon, GBP in quotation marks, comma, and finally, currency display with a capital D, colon, narrow symbol in quotation marks. And finally, I'll just make sure that there's a closing curly bracket there too. So if we click off, we can now see that our number counter has been instantly transformed into a currency. And the really cool thing about this is, we can now choose any currency we want. All we have to do is change the country code here to the standard currency value. So we could have AUD, for example, to format this as Australian dollars. Or we could put EUR in there to show it as euros. And it all updates nicely for us. So there we are. It's a pretty cool way to create number counters with commas, or even currency counters in After Effects, with a very small amount of code. If you want to dive deeper into all the parameters you can use in the to locale string function, I've added a link to the description that will take you to the Mozilla page, and there's all sorts of other options you can try here to format the numbers in a different way within After Effects. One final thing to note is that if you're using After Effects 2020 and you've watched this video and it still isn't working for you, then you may still be using the legacy expression engine. So to fix this, you may need to go to File, project settings, and then click the expressions tab, and make sure that JavaScript is selected from the dropdown. And that will ensure you're using the modern expression language rather than the old type. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, do like and subscribe, and head on over to madebyloop.co.uk for more motion design resources.